Hi guys. Maybe my person that light is crazy. I'm very photosensitive. There we go. I'll stand right there. That's better. Okay, so the name of my presentation is Work Smarter, Not Harder. It's about meta learning. Um, how do I progress this thing? I didn't even ask that part. Here, down. Excellent. So, who am I and what do I mean by meta learning? Uh, my name is Ben Matthews, like I already said, and I work at Union Pacific currently. I've been a developer for about 10 years. Uh, I also am a musician. And I actually used to be a professional video game player at one point, although I use that term in the most loose sense of the word. But <laughs> it's technically true. Um, okay, so what do I mean by meta learning? Basically, what I mean by that is it can mean a lot of things. It's kind of vague. What I mean is <clears throat> learning about learning. Um, you know, how do we study how we study, right? How do we get better at learning? How can we learn faster? Um, Ideally, I'm sure you guys all like to learn and would like to learn faster. So here, what I'm trying to indicate, this is a little bit misleading. Uh, there's a lot of, I could, this is from a, a journal about uh, productivity measurements at a particular company. And what they were trying to illustrate here is we can vary our methodology. So we just switch from, say, the waterfall model to agile or what have you. And we can go from maybe like a 1x productivity to a 2x. But you always have on the individual level these outliers, these like 10x performers. Um, so the question is, you know, I mean, that's great that there's different uh, management styles, but, you know, wouldn't you like to be one of the 10x developers? Maybe you guys have heard the notion of the 10x developer. Uh, you know, that's a term you see thrown around a lot. It's kind of a contentious term. Some people say that that's a myth, but I believe in it. And I want to know, how do you become a 10x developer? Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, in my opinion, it's what you can call presence, or you can call it mindfulness, mastery, focus, flow, being in the zone, right? Um, so, what do I mean by the zone? It's kind of vague, right? <laughs> but you know it when you see it. So, uh, you know, here I have three legends on the screen, actually. Uh, I hope people know who Michael Jordan is. I hope at least one person here knows who's in the middle. John Carmack. Thank you. Thank you. Because if, if someone, if no one knew who that was, I'd be ashamed. Uh, but uh, anyways, like, so why is it for some people, they're like permanently in the zone, right? Like, this is a mystery to me. I'm sure it is to you. My answer is, and this is just my conjecture. I, I, I'm trying to get there myself. I wish I could be. Uh, it's because you're not learning fast enough. If you were a legit master of what you did, you would probably feel like that all the time. So why? Why can't we learn fast enough? Uh, one likely culprit is, it sounds like hippy dippy foo foo new agey BS, but it could very well be your belief systems. <laughs> By that I mean it, a huge thing that impacts this is how you view intelligence as game. And by that what I'm saying is there's basically they did some studies and they found out there's two typical models for how people believe intelligence functions. There's the standard misunderstanding of how IQ functions, which is that, oh, it's this thing, you have this innate level of smartness, and it's a static thing, you're born with it, either you got it or you don't. That's the traditional model of intelligence. The other model, though, they find that there's other people who have this model of intelligence that says, actually, it's malleable and it could change with effort. And what they found when they measured these things is that people who believe intelligence can be changed and uh, uh, progress through hard work lo and behold, can become higher performers, whereas people who have this view of intelligence that, well, you know, I'm good at computers and, you know, this is what I'm special at, they actually hit walls and they can't get past them because of their belief about intelligence itself. They, once they finally hit a problem that's not innate to them, not natural for them, they hit the wall and then they don't have the ethic to push through that. So, another culprit could be uh, just a lack of mindfulness in general. I won't talk about meditation too much right now since it's kind of like all the rage, but I would suggest looking into it. If you haven't yet, I'm a meditator, so feel free to ask me questions about it if you're curious. Also, maybe you guys have heard binaural beats. It's, uh, it's a lot of people call it like pseudoscience. Uh, I'm still a little bit on the fence myself about it, but it's at least worth a Google search. Um, and I guess I should say a little bit more about it. What it is essentially is two different waveforms into each ear at a different frequency. And so that kind of drives your brain a little bit wacky. And what happens is 
your brain actually hallucinates a third tone to compensate for the dissonance in the two conflicting tones. A lot of people claim it makes them feel more centered, etc., etc. Do your own research on that. Uh, and then obviously, I think this one is not contentious. We all know that just listening to good music in general can help us focus. You know, traditionally they say classical music, maybe death metal works for you. Uh, I'm a hip hop guy. Whatever is your thing, you can, you, it can help put you in that zone. Finally, one last thing I want to mention, I'm almost out of time, I would like to ask questions if possible, is it is actually possible to get a sort of Rain Man-like memory where you can look at 2,000 toothpicks on the floor and exactly count them, or count 10 million digits of pi or what have you. There's this misnomer that that is a, uh, another innate uh, sort of savant-like thing. It's not. There's a book called Moonwalking with Einstein. You should read it. You can learn about how to develop your own memory palace. And then this is the slide where I bar for a lot of text that you would say, any questions, because I don't have enough time to talk about all this stuff, but this is my five minute version of this topic. Uh, I think that's probably a good time to say any questions. What is burning the boats? Burning the boats is a sort of exactly what I did tonight. I had very little prep for this speech, so I forced myself to do it by emailing Zach. And then I had no choice. I had burned the boats. There's no back out at that point. I don't want to look like a quitter. So it's the notion when the Romans went to war, I think it was the Romans, they would actually burn the boats because there was no point of return then. And it's a way to tie your hands to a task. <laughs> Got it. Because sometimes the hardest part is just doing the thing. Yes? How do you convince someone else of the <clears throat> idea that your intelligence is not static? How can you convince someone else that they can change and learn? You know, I mean, it, honestly, in my opinion, it's up to them. I don't think you can really, if someone wants to clutch that belief strong enough, just let them. Maybe there's a good reason why they don't, they're not open to that. You know, this presentation would not be for someone like that, I would say. Convince them by not convincing them, that's what I would say. That's more <laughs> likely to work, you know? Okay. Yeah? How do you, how, <clears throat> sorry, how do you teach someone when they get to that level of focus or in the zone that they're actually in the zone? So I, actually, that ties back to, that's a great question, it ties back to neural feedback. They actually have brain monitors they can hook onto you now. They like, these pro athletes use it, like Tiger Woods, they're like Tiger, you're locked in. They can actually give you feedback when, when they detect, do the, there's alpha, beta, gamma, all these different brain wave levels, and then when they detect a certain uh, mixture of those brain waves, they can say, yep, you're in that zone. So that's an actual scientific way to measure it. As far as teaching it without bringing science into the picture, uh, you know, that, that's a lot harder of a thing to try to explain in like 10 seconds, but I would say, you know, uh, just flow state activities, you can encourage the person to identify when they are feeling that flow state. Uh, playing an instrument is a great way to experience the sense of flow. You can tell when you really got something, so that would be one way I'd say for someone to self-sense when they're in a flow. You can feel when you're off rhythm, you can feel when you're on pitch, so I better, I better stop though, that's probably time. And thank you, and come talk to me if you're curious, and that's all.